All right, guys, today we've got a 2014 Chevy Cruze with a 1.4 liter in it. It's got a blown head gasket, we already know that, but we wanted to show you three ways that you can test it. Let's get into it. Okay, so we're gonna do the most expensive piece of equipment to test it with down to the least expensive piece of equipment to test it with. Now, two of these pieces of equipment, the two most expensive ones, have got numerous other um, capabilities. They can, do, they can do many other things on a vehicle. The last one is going to be specifically to uh, check for blown head gaskets. So, first one's going to be five gas analyzer. So we got our gas analyzer here from ATS, right? It's Bluetooth. So this is our, basically what would normally go on the tailpipe, okay? And if we come over here, we can see our hydrocarbons. But so what we're looking at is our hydrocarbons here. Okay, so if we've got exhaust gases coming back up into our coolant uh, expansion tank, then we're going to pick up hydrocarbons on here. Now, be very careful when you're doing this. You do not want this probe to get wet in any way. All right, so I'm just going to be really careful. We're going to stick it down here. Now, the coolant's pretty low in there. Um, we can immediately see that thing start jumping up. And it'll get considerably higher than that, I'm sure. But we should basically, on a good one, I mean, here we are, 100 and something. Um, on a good one, we're not really going to pick up much of anything. So let me just kind of... We can't. There's a jumping up 95, 39. So what we can do also on this is we can take and put it on our graph, right? Easier way of seeing it. I had it out. It does take a minute for this thing to, you know, pump and reach the machine. So there we are at 125, right? It was jumping around, but we could definitely, even with that, we know it's bad. We shouldn't have, we shouldn't really have any hydrocarbons in the, in the coolant, uh, in the air above the coolant. So, so that's one way of checking it right here. Okay. Now. Yeah, we, we were messing with it yesterday and it was setting up about 300. And it, and it, you know, when it gets warm, this thing could have different amounts of gases getting in here. So, you know, but just be aware, please don't let the, don't let the, um, for a probe get into any kind of coolant or any kind of dampness because it'll cause issues. All right, so, all right. I mean, that's bad. Okay. All right, so that's one. Let me go ahead and turn the pump off on that. Our next one's gonna be, this is a CO2 detector. Uh, this is for the bullseye leak detector. Now, what else can this do? This can, uh, we, we put in, you've probably seen on other videos, we put it in AC, we put CO2 in AC, uh, we put CO2 in the EVAP systems and we use this to check for leaks there. So. Gotta be real careful about this one because as we're breathing out, we'll 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 uh, get this thing to go off. But if we take that, we can see that thing goes right off instantly. It's picking up, it's picking up CO2 in the in the um, in the coolant. So in the in the in the air above the coolant, right? So that's our second way of doing it. Here is the least expensive way you can do it, and it is very accurate. Um, now this is very old. I've had this thing for I don't know how long, long, long time. And I just found out yesterday that Snap-on makes this. And the reason I need, I need a new one is because it's got a dual chamber. So you're supposed to put this, this chemical in both chambers. And then you put this here and we're going to do it in a second and we pump it. And what it's going to do is it's going to pull the air that's above the coolant in this expansion tank and it's gonna run it down through the chemical and this chemical will change color if it's got a uh, blown head gasket. And the reason it's got the dual chambers is sometimes you get the coolant that'll get into here and it'll fill, it'll, it'll, it'll get into this one and contaminate this one, but it won't get up here. Uh, at some point in its life, there's a little cone that goes above this piece here and that cone's missing. That's why I needed a new one. 
and just found out yesterday from Chris that Snap-on has this. So, we're gonna put this in and all we're gonna do is we're just gonna, I'm just pushing down on it, you know, so it gets a good seal here. And then I'm just gonna pump this and we're gonna see that it's gonna pull the air that's above the coolant into this chemical. Now this chemical changes color, so it'll go from blue to yellow or green. Um, and it may take, you know, a minute for this to work, but we can already see that it's changing color. It's already going, it's already changed from blue and turned to what to my eye looks yellowish green. So that's a blown head gasket right there, 100%. And the car runs, runs okay. Um, I did notice, so we can clearly see, that's changed, can you see it on there good? Yeah. yeah. So, no good, and this came right? From another shop. This came from another shop. The car, um, un unfortunately, the client just bought the car <clears throat> about a little over a month ago and she had some overheating issues, took it to a shop, they put a thermostat in it. She left, she had to go right back because it was overheating again. And then they told her how to blow in head gasket. She just wanted to get a second opinion. So we're getting rid of her second opinion. I noticed when I pulled the cap off yesterday, uh, it had only been running for just a minute to pull it in. It had pressure on it. That's usually a sign that we've got a problem because it should take a little while to build pressure up. So, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and shut it off actually now. So we don't. Yeah, it's not hot yet, but it will. It'll get. It'll start overheating. So uh, that's three ways to test blown head gasket. And I know a lot of you guys are going, "Oh man, that's crazy to use a you know really expensive piece of equipment for a blown head gasket." Head gasket. I get it. But here's the thing. Sometimes, sometimes even though this is really accurate and works good, uh, if it's a really slightly blown head gasket, you might have a tough time picking it up with this. And we will pick it up with that five gas, and we will definitely pick it up with this guy. So. Um, I mean, there's pluses to them all. I mean, you're only talking about, I was gonna look up and see how much this is. Maybe you can put a link in here and see how much this stuff is. Um, but I mean, we're not talking to much money guys and this thing will this thing will do, I don't know, dozens and dozens of head gasket tests. So I use this for, for many, many, many years. And then, you know, then we got this and now we got that. So you know, there's a place for everything. Uh, one thing about blown head gaskets, if you've got a blown head gasket on a vehicle, uh, it's much like a, you know, a catalytic converter or an engine control module, you know, uh, you can't say it on YouTube, but let's just say they, they, they're always damaged by something else. I have a saying for it, but I can't say it on YouTube, but they, they're always damaged by something else. So they don't, they don't damage themselves. So if this thing's got a blown head gasket on it, something caused it to blow the head gasket. And unfortunately, a lot of times, if it's really blown, it's really difficult to know. I mean, it could be something as simple as a thermostat, which was already done. Um, could have a cooling fan issue. It's hard to really determine that when it's got a blown head gasket, which is gonna cause it to overheat. These are, these are discussions we need to have with the client. Like, hey, listen, we're gonna do a head gasket on it. I'd put a thermostat in it no matter what. Uh, we can test the cooling fan to a point. And I would do all that before I put the head gasket on there when I was doing the head gasket. But then when it was all said and done, I'd be like, we got to run this thing. We got to make sure that there's no other issues, um, water pump or who knows. So just make sure that when you're doing it, that, you know, one, you're having a conversation with your client and two, know that something caused the head gasket to blow. And you need to find that out before you ship the car, because otherwise it's going to come back to you with another blown head gasket. So. Yeah. And that's another thing, you know, um, a lot of times, let's look at this one. This one's clearly got a blown head gasket, right? Well, what are we always taught? We're always taught to look at the oil and it'll be milky. Well, that oil is not milky. You know, that's, that's clean, nothing wrong with that. The other thing you can do is, uh, if it's blown, a lot of times that moisture will get into the crankcase mixed with the oil and this cap will just have all kind of milky, oily residue on it. That doesn't have any sign of that. So some obvious signs of, of a blown head gasket would be, you know, obviously milky oil, something like that, uh, milky oil residue up here, but this one doesn't have that at all, but clearly has a blown head gasket. So. Uh, sometimes the old school signs are there, cut and dry. Sometimes they're not. You got to use a little technology to find out what's going on with it. So, and then of course you could always do the pressurize the cooling system. You know, take the spark plugs out, look down in the cylinders for 
for coolant, you set it overnight. I mean, sometimes you got to get into these things when you, you know, maybe you got a little tiny bit of a misfire when it's cold in the morning, it's using some coolant. You can't prove out that it's got a blown head gasket. It could seal up after it gets hot, you know, and, and expands. Um, sometimes you pressurize it overnight, have the spark plugs out of it, run a bore scope down in there in the morning before you start it and just look and see if you see any coolant in there. There's other ways of doing this um, on ones that are really difficult, but most of them are pretty cut and dry. So, all right, anyway. Three ways to test a blown head gasket. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that thumbs up. You know, hit that uh, hit that subscribe button and hit that bell so you get notified every time we release a video. We'll see you in the next one.